Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Curtis Morley. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here this afternoon. How are you? Doing well. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, you betcha. I'm grateful to have you on. You have built several successful businesses, and now you have a wonderful book out as well, The Entrepreneur's Paradox, How to Overcome the 16 Pitfalls Along the Startup Journey. And uh, there's quite a few business owners who might be listening in who are just getting started, and they might even be making some mistakes they're not even aware of, but you're going to help them figure out what some of those are and how to overcome them. Another interesting aspect, looking over at the notes from your PR agency, is um, flight or fight versus thrill and skill. What the heck is that? That would be thrilling to find more about that. Uh, before we do that, share a little bit about your backstory with our audience, though. Well, thanks so much. So <clears throat> I started my first company halfway through my college career, and um, it was a digital media agency doing everything from logo design and branding to radio and TV commercials, all the way to interactive websites and heavy backend database application development. Wow. And um, from there, started a very different company, a digital sheet music company. I thought that was so, really fascinating. You're, you're a musician, by the way, I hear. I am. I, yeah. I am, definitely love to write songs, love to play. It's, yeah, it's one of my passions. What do you play? I play guitar. Oh, yay. So yeah. what brought you into being intrigued by music and then ultimately creating that sheet music company? Well, it's funny. I started my college career in music. Uh, originally, I was going to I was going to be a composer, director, and do vocal performance, and um, <laughs> and then I, I had the rude awakening that someday I'd actually need to make money. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so instead of instead of continuing on that path, I, I switched over to a business degree with marketing emphasis, and actually um, dropped out halfway through to start my own company, mm. and so um, never finished my degree until this last year. Congratulations. That's so awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, that goes to show that you might have a passion about how to how to apply it in a way that you can be successful and, and be happy, do what you love, but at the same time, make money because you do need to feed yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> a key ingredient. <laughs> yeah. Paying rent, food, all that good stuff. I was in the School of Performing Arts and I had said I wanted to play in the pit orchestra is what I wanted to do for a job. And the principal said, okay, but then what? What are you going to do instead or in lieu of that? I'm like, what do you mean in lieu of that? Because in high school, you think anything's possible. I'll just be a musician. It'll be awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so it's great to see you made um, a, a, a direction using your passion and creating something wonderful. Now, what are some of the things you avoided or, or maybe the lessons you learned being an entrepreneur and maybe some of the mistakes you made that you were, you know, went through and now are teaching in your book how not to make them? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. And um, I wish I could say I avoided the mistakes. Um, the reason I wrote the book, The Entrepreneur's Paradox, was specifically because I made the mistakes. I made every single one of them. And not just once or even twice, but some three and four times. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was an experience that really taught me. Um, actually, the, there was an experience where I was in Chicago um, meeting with clients and one of my friends came with me and he was also a business owner. And we were at Giordano's Pizza. Remember the big, mm -hmm. fat Chicago-style pizza? Mm -hmm. And our conversation was just about as deep as the, the pizza was. And I, we were saying, why isn't everybody in the world an entrepreneur? And my friend mm -hmm. made a comment that really had a big impact on me. His yeah. name is Greg, Greg Tedra. Love him to <laughs> death. And he said, he said, you know what? I'm actually too stupid to do it the normal way. I have to figure out a faster, better way. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we both chuckled, but there was a real golden nugget in there mm -hmm. that there is a better, faster way to do business, mm -hmm. and that kind of that kind of woke me up. Like, wow, what? How am I making these mistakes over and over again? Mm -hmm. I need to become I need to become a student of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I really need to figure this out because I was making those mistakes all over the place, and and the reason I wrote the book was really for a younger version of me. I wanted to help that person. I wanted to help the person just starting out in their company, help them find that success that they wouldn't otherwise have. 
So it kind of is like a letter back to your younger self. If you could talk to your younger self, this is what you would tell them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, you know what this reminds me of recently, I, you know, with all the COVID stuff going on and some business owners telling me how much they're struggling. A lot of people who are even employees are now having to become business owners out of necessity. And it made me think back to before modern life, before we had the industrial age, where everyone kind of was a business owner, an entrepreneur. The tan, uh, tansmen did tanning stuff. You know, this guy grew stuff. This guy made blankets. It's, it's like we all had our niches and we delivered services and goods to each other and bartered or, you know, traded money. Um, but I think uh, we were much closer to doing that sort of thing in the past. And we are now we've become disconnected to that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and this, this season that we're in, <laughs> and I'll call it a season because it, it won't last forever. But um, it's, it's a, a huge change. Mm -hmm. in everything we've done. I mean, you think of every aspect of life and it's been affected. And um, one, one question I get a lot is, is now a good time to start a business? And I've, I've, we've talked a little bit about that before. And, and I give the answer as an emphatic yes, not just a yes, but an emphatic yes. And just like you said, people are, you know, they're losing their jobs because things are changing. Mm -hmm. And um, and change, another name for change is opportunity. That's right. That's right. And every time there's change, there's mm -hmm. opportunity. There's, there's a new business that needs to be formed. And right now, there is unprecedented change. In my lifetime, I haven't seen change like this. No, me and, either. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and what that means is just replace that word change with opportunity because mm. Every single change means there's an opportunity for a new business, a new idea, a new invention, every single one of those. Yeah. And, and that reframe of just saying, okay, oh, this is so awful. Everything's change, change, change. Instead of saying, okay, where's the opportunity in this? Just asking a different question, a very important question, because you can get stuck in those negative questions and then you go in circles going nowhere, but just shifting it to, okay, instead of, you know, change, change, change. Where's the opportunity? Let me, you know, and I find, I don't know about you, but I find journaling really helpful. So like just writing it out. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Every yeah. day. So tell me now, uh, what is flight or fight versus thrill and skill? What the heck is that? Uh, when I re read that, I was like, okay, I like flying. So what is, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so, um, so part of, part of what I do when I mentor or coach people and, and what I've put into the book, The Entrepreneur's Paradox, is, is, the, is overcoming these pitfalls. And one of the biggest pitfalls is, is trusting your fears. Mm. And, um, and I, I write in the book, The Entrepreneur's Paradox, doubt your doubts instead of trusting your fears. Doubt and your and mm. if, you look at, if you look at fight or flight, it's an aroused emotion. So you get into a situation where something needs to happen and you get this aroused emotion, you get, your heartbeat increases, you know, sometimes you sweat, all of these physiological changes are happening yeah. and that's flight or, fight or flight. You can okay. either fight, go to town, or you can run away. And, um, and it's amazing because there was a, a study done at Harvard that, you know, in that time of fear or anxiety or fight or flight, that just changing your perception, changing a few words actually has a dramatic effect. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you're about to go up on stage and give a speech and you say, oh, I'm so anxious, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna, oh, and you have all these panic feelings and anxiety feelings, um, you can very simply, instead of wanting to run away or fight, and, and being on stage, the typical response is <laughs> run away. You, know? ah. uh, you can change your mentality. You can change your mode of thinking. And there's another aroused emotion that mm. matches this fight or flight. Mm. And the study they did at Harvard, um, all they had people do, they, they had people sing, which is a very scary thing. They had people do math. And they also had people prepare a speech and give a speech in front of others. Uh -huh. And they had one control group that was, um, they said, I'm anxious about this. Uh -huh. They had another control group that said nothing. And the third control group said, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. 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 That's it. I'm excited. And what happened 
the group that did nothing was the control group. They, um, they performed not as well. The group that said, I'm anxious or I'm scared, they did horrible. The group that said, I'm excited, not only did their, when they were singing, that their pitch came mm-hmm. on point, their efficacy and their self-belief mm-hmm. that they said, I can do this. I'm excited. Their joy level went up. So the reason I call it thrill and skill is because saying I'm excited produces that thrill. And even as I'm saying it right now, yeah. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm excited. I can wow. feel it inside of me. Yeah, and you, the, wow. Curtis, you know what this reminds me of? When I, when I, I was scared of flying. That's why I took flying lessons. I, oh, had this, I was petrified. And I remember going there the first time. I was so scared, fearful, all those, you know, all those words. But then when I went up and I, I had nowhere to go but to deal with it, what's interesting is that same feeling when I decided to later go back and take flying lessons was still there, except now I was saying I was excited about it. Because now yeah. I decided I wanted to I wanted to do this. Yes. But really the, the feeling didn't change. It was the same feeling. Yeah. So both are aroused emotions. Anxiety. Yeah. And uh-huh. excitement are both arousing emotions. And what happens to the body physiologically, so they've done several studies on this, is almost, not quite, almost the exact same reaction. When you're excited, your heartbeat goes faster. Uh-huh. When you're scared, your heartbeat goes faster. When you're excited, oftentimes you sweat. When you're scared, you sweat. There's a few key differences, though. Uh-huh. When, you're, when you have anxiety, when you feel that fear, um, a principle called vasoconstriction happens. So it actually decreases, it constricts your blood vessels to the outer limbs and to your brain. <laughs> oh my gosh, so you get dumb. <laughs> so, uh-huh. yes, when you get anxious, you actually lose motor function and you lose uh-huh. mental cognition. When you get excited, it does the exact opposite. Your oh blood vessels God. open up and you have better motor control and you can think more clearly. As oh well, God. a key difference is in your brain. Uh-huh. When you get anxious, the neural receptors actually disconnect. It's crazy. And the wow. reason they do that is it's a really important survival skill uh-huh. because you, they, they, your body is saying, you don't, the only thing you need to do right now is either run or fight. That's run from that lion. <laughs> Stop thinking. Don't yeah. think anymore. You've got two choices, run or fight. That's uh-huh. it. But when you're excited, mm-hmm. it, the neural connectors actually increase and you are able to process information faster and uh-huh. better. And so it's the reason I call it thrill and skill is because I'm excited. There is a thrill. But then the skill side of things is your body physiologically makes you better, faster, smarter when you change that thinking. That is, that is fabulous. So what I'm getting so far, what we hit on is for one, having change, which can be scary shifting it, the perspective to opportunity. And then here again, we talk about if you're scared of something, shifting it to excitement, that shift in your mind, actually opening you up and, and actually helping you be stronger, better, smarter, and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Well, wow. yeah. and you know, so it's not, not that much harder. It's just a shift in perspective. Now, if people say, if you're stuck in a rut, and it'd be really hard when you're like a hamster wheel and all these what seem seemingly seems as bad things happening. How do you shift your perspective? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> I'm so glad because, you know, in, in the COVID world, of, if it's okay to use an example of yeah. the, the world we're living in, yeah. you know, in the COVID world, you can say, oh man, I, I'm struggling. I can't figure out how to keep my business alive, mm-hmm. etc. All of those things, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. Yeah. If you change it to say, I'm excited to figure out how to keep my business alive, Mm. or I'm excited to, I'm excited to get on the other side of this. I'm excited to increase revenue in a Mm downtime, you know, changing that. And it's very simple, very subtle nuance is, Mm -hmm. oh, I can't figure out how to keep my business alive. Well, change that. I'm excited to figure out how to keep my business alive. And all of a sudden, the brain starts shifting. Uh-huh. And um, I have one of my favorite clients. Actually, I'll give two examples. One okay. has a travel expedition company. Her name's Kylie Chen. And you think travel expedition in COVID, that's the perfect business to go defunct in, <laughs> in a COVID world. Because there's only four countries right now we can even travel to. Huh. You know? 
So her entire business shut down. Well, she could have just said, oh, I don't know how to do this. Time to throw up my hands, throw in the white towel. Mm -hmm. we're, we're closing the doors. But the beauty of the change, the beauty of the opportunity in today's world is that I can say, okay, there's still a demand, but mm -hmm. where did the demand go? Mm -hmm. The demand hasn't left. Mm -hmm. People still want to travel. They still want to have amazing experiences in nature and cool places. They want to explore. They want to set themselves free. That didn't go away just because we got COVID. It's still there. So Kylie said, okay, that's there, but where is it? Mm. And she said, we can't travel abroad, so let's do it locally. Let's do it domestically. Mm -hmm. So she created a second company called Wonder Camp. And uh -huh. Wonder Camp is glamping experiences mm -hmm. in and near national parks where there's this gorgeous, amazing nature to be seen and explored. Mm -hmm. And she's doing the same thing, but doing locally and crushing it. Oh. And it's so fun to see how, awesome. how she took change turned it into opportunity, and now she's got a flourishing business. And what's going to happen mm. is that as soon as COVID goes away or we learn how to manage it, yeah. she'll be in such a great position to re-enter the global market. Yeah. Now she has two sources of income yeah. that she's going to be even in a better place than she was before. That is such a fantastic story. And you never know where that shift will take you. It might take you as it did for her to a totally different business. Now, for me online, because I've been doing a lot of Zooming, I've met some people in the Icelandic countries like uh, Sweden and Norway. I've never even dreamed of going there, but connecting with them on Zoom a lot, I've gotten to know a little bit about their culture and their country and, and Greece the same. So it, it you know, just because we're not physically there doesn't mean we can't connect with people and the other countries. It's just, it's just different right now. Yeah. 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 It's just really cool. Yeah. And you had another story. What was the other one? The other story is, is right along the same lines. I have a friend named Scott Porter and he has an awesome company called San Diablo Churros. Ooh. So Ooh, is those, those little desserts. Yes. But Ooh. they're artisan churros. So oh. you didn't think churros could be gourmet he found a, may, a way to make churros gourmet. They are amazing. They're so delectable. And yeah, yeah. you eat one and you're like, give me six more. I oh no, <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, COVID, you know, mm -hmm. restaurants shut down his, his churro trucks and his, he would cater events. So that was what he's really known for is, is catering these amazing, you know, galas and things like that. And, um, and they stopped. All of them stopped. And you think again, where, you know, my business is just going to shut down. Okay, it's time. You know, I'm a restaurant or I'm a food service. People don't need that anymore. But the truth is the demand is still there, but the opportunity is somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so he said the same thing. Where did the need go? Where did the demand go? And so now you can look it up, sandiablochurls.com. Um, you can get a home churro kit where... You can buy a home churro kit. You make them at home. They're amazing. They're just delicious. Oh, and again, wow. you learned where the yeah. demand was is people still want fun, cool, exciting desserts and treats. They just won't get it at a gala. They'll get yeah. it at home. Yeah. And this is fabulous, Curtis, because how many people have told me I'm at home with my kids and we have so much time together. Well, here's a wonderful family event that you could do together in the kitchen and have churros after dinner, but you made them yourselves and you had fun doing it. And what I am loving about this time actually is it's kind of bringing back that that togetherness family thing, which got lost because all of us were doing our different things, going to the gym, going to soccer, and we're all little, all over the place. And now we're kind of regrouping as family networks. And it's kind of awesome. Yeah. It really yeah, it really is. It really is. Yeah. yeah well, this has been so fantastic. I don't want people to leave without finding out how they can find out more about you and the entrepreneurial paradox how do they get a copy and all that good jazz yeah you can go to amazon or um, barnes and noble and um, the book is is for pre-order it'll awesome. come out march 16th as well as um, you go to the entrepreneursparadox.com and learn about the coaching and mentoring oh that's awesome the entrepreneurs paradox find out how not to make the mistakes that i know i've made <laughs> and a lot of fitness owners uh, if you're just starting out you don't have to make those mistakes you can learn from people uh veterans out there i just have to thank you again curtis for coming to savvy broadcasting and sharing your great wisdom today thank you thank you so much christina 
like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.